a warm welcome to You're a Wizard, a magical sleep saga inspired by the world of Harry Potter, where you are the main character. As you take a moment to get comfortable, remind yourself that this is your story, and there are no limits to what you can add to this adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. So be sure to bring along your own unique imagination. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder, and adventure as we continue our Harry Potter sleep saga. As you return into the afternoon sun and into the bustling alley, you see a wizard standing next to your black and white cat, stroking its head and looking at you with a mischievous glint in their eye. After a quick double take, you soon realize it is your best friend, one of the most important people in your life. You run to them and share a warm hug. Your best friend tells you they too received a letter this morning and had to find their way to this magical place. They had only just received their wand when this lovely cat greeted them in the street and brought them here to wait for you. An uncontrollable smile fills your face and you peer behind you to check in on your furry companion. Indeed, the black and white cat now sits proudly upright on the wall next to you, purring softly. They give you an affectionate blink, a sign of trust between animal and human. You cannot believe this little cat has brought your best friend directly to you. The cat has done their duty today. They have brought you here safely, and they will stay here now to help other stranded new wizards find their way. You give them a farewell scratch behind the ear, and they brush their cheek against your hand. You truly hope that your paths will cross again soon. You join your best friend, and together you continue to make your way back through this enchanted street. You turn and share one final look with the cat, who is still watching over you. The day is in full swing now. Shopkeepers stand outside their doors, welcoming new customers, and their young assistants hurry around, pushing trolleys full of books, potion bottles, robes, and suitcases. You see many wizards carrying their new animals. One holds a small toad. Another cradles a puppy. And a third has a brown and white owl resting on their shoulder, the empty cage in their hand. You come at last to a purple-fronted building with silver writing across the top. This is the place for new wizards 
to be fitted into their uniforms and robes, and where you will find all the books you could possibly need. You open the purple wooden door and enter the store, followed by your friend. Inside, one or two wizards are being fitted into uniforms upstairs, as others quietly move through the tall bookshelves on the ground floor. Purple curtains are tied back behind the windows where the sun beams in spotlights on the tiled floor. From above you, at the top of the stairs, a squat elderly witch calls down to you, telling you that if you'd like to be fitted into new robes, then head up the stairs and she will be with you in a moment. Your best friend leads the way, and you both climb the thin, rickety staircase. The wooden handrail is loose and moves in your grip. As you reach the top, the lady's assistant takes your friend to be fitted into their new robes. As you watch them disappear round a corner, the old lady approaches you with a warm and welcoming smile, beckoning you to follow her. With a bubbling excitement, you follow her lead, and she takes you round to the left, where a small fitting room awaits, covered by a thick purple curtain. Wand in hand, the lady draws back the curtain and you head inside. There is a circular wooden platform which the lady tells you to stand on and hold out your arms. In that moment, a small compact tape measure floats into the booth. The tape measure begins to glide around you, first stretching out across your arms then wrapping gently around your waist, up to your chest, and across your shoulders. It stretches down your leg and around your feet. The tape measure is proud and sophisticated in its work, and you can tell by the effortless way it dances around you that it has done this a thousand times. After it has taken your measurements, the tape drifts over to the shopkeeper, who has jotted down all the numbers. She gives you a nod and waddles away into the store cupboard, followed by her trusty tape. In mere seconds, she returns with a brand new uniform and wizard robe, handmade to perfection. She passes them to you, and with a flick of her wand, the curtain closes, giving you some privacy. As you try on each new layer, you cannot believe how perfectly crafted this uniform is. Every piece fits snug to your body and provides a warm, glowing comfort. Fully robed now, you check the mirror behind you and see yourself as you were always meant to be. It is a breathtaking moment one that leaves you speechless. Your magical journey has finally begun. With a renewed excitement, you quickly change back into your day clothes, 
and when your last shoe is on, the curtain opens of its own accord, revealing the happy shopkeeper. You tell her your uniform is a perfect fit, to which she gives you a kind but knowing smile. They're always a perfect fit, she reminds you with a wink. With a flick of her wand, the lady folds your robes neatly and places them in a bag. And perfect timing too, as your best friend emerges from round a corner, their new robes in hand. You thank the shopkeeper with a smile and tell her that you also need to buy some books. She points down to the library below and tells you to find her when you have everything you need. You and your friend wander back down the stairs and into the vast maze-like library. You take out your list from your pocket and see that three books are needed for this term. Care of Magical Creatures, Mastering Potions, A Complete Guide, and The Wizard's Book of Charms and Spells. You begin methodically to work your way through the books in alphabetical order. The atmosphere is quiet and peaceful, a nice change from the busy street outside. The air is cool and refreshing, away from the summer sun. You arrive at the letter C, and your eyes scan along the bookshelf. You spot a large red leather bound book with gold writing. You take it from the shelf, blow away a thin layer of dust and place care of magical creatures into your bag. The smell of old parchment lingers and is utterly enchanting. You find yourself in a calm and tranquil state of mind. This world already feels so natural to you, and you couldn't feel more at home if you tried. Just then, you stumble upon the letter M, and an emerald green book at the top stands out clearly. You shuffle mastering potions off the shelf and flick through the pages. There are charcoal illustrations of many different potions and long lists of instructions and all the possible side effects. The pages are delicate and some have slightly frayed edges. You close the book and place it in your bag as you continue to peruse the shelves in search of your final text. In that moment, your friend appears round the corner and passes you one of the two books in their hand. The book is smooth and black with silver stars and a wand on the cover. You thank your friend and add the wizard's book of charms and spells to your collection. As you emerge from the bookshelves, you see the kind old lady at the front desk. You place two gold and silver coins in her palm, 
and with uniform and books in hand, you descend once again back into the street. You stroll casually now, your best friend by your side, talking away. You share your stories about how you both arrived here. You tell them about the owl, the black and white cat, and your magical letter that transported you here as a port key. Your friend tells you that their letter was waiting for them this morning, poking through the letterbox, but there was no owl or cat on their journey. Instead, their letter came with a small pouch of powder, which they were told to throw down into their fireplace and speak the name of this enchanting street. Your journey takes you now past a grey and dingy looking shop. In the window are potion bottles full of different coloured liquids pouring back and forth between one another. Cauldrons filled with who knows what stir themselves in a rhythm and bubble away. A gentle steam fills the window, and although the shop is dark, it is enticing. You quietly veer away from the street, up a small ramp, and through the tall, grey door. The air is still here, and filled with a light steam. The shop appears to be completely empty. The only source of light is a small crackling fire in a stone fireplace above which sits a large grey cauldron, bubbling softly. The flames burn in bright blue, green and red. As your eyes wander, you see statues of gargoyles, centaurs, dragons and other mythical creatures decorating the room. Then, a small trap door in the middle of the room flips open, and a shadowy figure in a black cloak emerges, carrying a handful of strange ingredients, and with a thin layer of dust on their shoulders and their brow. The shopkeeper has a slight hunched back and a shuffling walk, they welcome you to their magical apothecary and tell you to browse freely. But they add with a husky laugh not to drink any of the potions on display. This potions master does seem to have a mysterious air about him, but he is not frightening, merely eccentric. He seems to enjoy his image as the dark cloaked figure, and perhaps takes the part a little too seriously, but he is kind nonetheless, and friendly to you. With a polite smile, you turn away and begin to examine the potion equipment and the endless empty cauldrons as you wander along the creaky floorboards. Back at the main desk, the potions master now stirs a pestle and mortar, grinding a small green rock into a fine powder. A silver and emerald dust drifts up into the air, mingled with starlight. Further along the thick wooden shelf, there is a collection of cauldrons, measuring spoons, 
bottles and other equipment all grouped together. It is exactly what you need. In that moment, before you can touch them, the bottles and cauldrons lift slowly into the air. They arch over the top of you, and you both turn to follow their movement. With a mischievous half-smile, the shopkeeper lightly waves his wand and guides your new equipment into a neat pile before wrapping them up in a large box. With the tying of a black ribbon on the top, it is ready. As you pay the potions master, he advises you to both take a trolley for the remainder of your trip. And in that moment, two metal trolleys roll out onto the shop floor by themselves. They wiggle their front wheels as a greeting to you, excited to finally be put to use. You thank the potions master and you both take a trolley and fill it with your robes, books and your new box on top before opening the door and rolling your trolleys back into the alley. As you make your way down the cobbled street, you check your list and see that you still have to collect your animal and your wand. Your friend walks beside you, pushing their trolley, and you both continue to take in this magical world. Things are less crowded outside now, still busy, but there is a more relaxed feeling in the air. Many wizards have already bought most of their things, and the day has become more leisurely now. You pass by a gaggle of witches selling magical flowers and jewels on a rickety old cart. There is a small wooden stand selling newspapers with moving pictures. Then you pass the magical joke shop, painted in a rich orange and filled with an enormous collection of wizarding toys, sweets and fun activities. Multicolored bubbles float from the door and into the sky and younger children run and jump after them. You share a knowing look with your friend and agree to visit this exciting shop when you have everything else that you need. Just then, your friend tugs at your arm and points to the large sign opposite. In front of you is a tall, black building with symmetrical windows that curve in a semicircle out onto the street. A soft light illuminates from them. In the exact middle is a jet black door and golden writing sits at the top. The finest wand makers in all the land. Your friend tells you they already have their wand, so they won't be coming in with you. And besides, it's tradition to enter this shop alone. That way, the wand maker can gain a better understanding of who you are and which wand might suit you. This is the part you have been the most nervous for. And now... An excitement builds in you. You leave behind your friend and your trolley, brush yourself down and enter the wand shop.
There is a different kind of magic here. You sense it in the air. Instead of wood panelled walls, you are surrounded by long, thin boxes, all of which, you assume, contain a magic wand. Atop the old, rustic writing desk in front of you are two lamps, perfectly placed and giving the room a warm orange glow. Behind the desk are many corridors of shelves, again full of long, thin boxes. The lids are in many different colours, and there is no organisation to be seen. There is no symmetry to the room. All the shelves are at a slight angle, the walls are crooked, and even the floor has a shallow tilt to the right. You walk up to the counter and notice a silver bell freshly polished. Your hand lifts over the bell, but just as you are about to press it, you stop, sensing a presence. Out from behind one of the many shelves slides a wiry-haired old wizard on a small wooden stepladder. The wand maker himself. His piercing blue eyes gaze at you curiously, but this is not a discomfort. His face is soft and his eyes are kind. The wand maker's presence is exciting. He is silent for a moment before greeting you personally by name. Amazed, your eyes widen. You have no idea how they know who you are. He tells you calmly it is his business to know who comes in and out of his store. They remember every wand they ever sold, and every wizard they sold them to. He asks you to place your hands on his desk, face up, and he examines the grooves and curves of your palms and fingers. The wand maker looks at you now, an intriguing glint in his eye. He turns instantly, steps up onto his ladder, and slides off into the endless corridor of boxes. He shuffles a box from the shelf and slides back to his desk. With a delicate hand, he takes off the lid. He folds back a white cloth in the box and lifts out the wand hand-carved oak and slightly crooked throughout, with three rings on the handle. He passes it to you over the desk and you take it in anticipation. He tells you to give it a wave. Nothing happens, merely a small poof of a blue spark. The wand maker's face drops in disappointment. He takes back the wand and traces his beard with his hand, his eyes wrinkled in thought. He rubs his finger over his thumb as he ponders his next move. His head slowly lifts as an idea seems to form in his mind. He glances to you with a new smile upon his face. Suddenly, he stands bolt upright.
and comes out from behind the desk, collecting a long wooden ladder on the way. He strides past you and heads to a tall one shelf behind. He climbs the ladder slowly, methodically, until he reaches the top shelf. With a last look back to you, he gives himself a nod. He seems to know now exactly what he is looking for. He shuffles out another box, blowing away the dust from the lid. He descends the ladder and with a sigh of relief hands you the box. There is a mysterious and powerful aura about it. The box is decorated in your favourite two colours, with a beautiful swirling pattern on the lid. Your eyes flick up to the wand maker and he urges you to open it. You shuffle off the lid and peel back the thick white cloth and there you see it, a beautiful handcrafted wand like nothing you have ever seen before. He tells you this wand was made a long, long time ago, crafted by his great-grandfather, but it has, until now, never been opened. You remove the wand and hold it gently in your hand. The moment you touch it, the wand gives off a golden glow, illuminating the entire shop and surrounding you in a warm light. A strange but wonderful sensation runs through your hand, up into your arm and across your entire body. The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end, and you feel a new magic surging through you. You feel as though you could fly, as though you could do anything in this moment. This wand has chosen you. The wand maker places a gentle hand on your shoulder and tells you that in all his years of wand making, he has hardly ever seen a connection this powerful between wand and wizard. He knows just by looking at you that you are destined for great things. He tells you that the kindness in your eyes and in your heart is as clear as the morning, and that with this wand by your side as an ally on your adventures, there isn't anything that you can't achieve. This is a truly beautiful moment, one that will stay with you forever. The light from your wand dims now, and you look at it in your hand, taking in its wonder and beauty before slipping it into your pocket. The final piece of the puzzle has been found. You pay the kind old wand maker with a beaming smile before leaving this enchanted shop 
and heading back out into the street.